few years after his heart transplant, a man named Greg Osterman crossed the finish line of Cincinnati Flying Pig Marathon. Not his first marathon, his sixth marathon. A transplant heart and his six full marathons. So what allowed Greg to do wasn't a magic. It was a measurable thing inside his body, the ability of his heart, lung and muscles to use the oxygen. So we have a name for that number that is called Devo to Max. And today in part one of the series, I want to show why some of the top studies in the world now treat Vivo to Max as a powerful or even more powerful than cholesterol, blood pressure or weight in predicting your long-term health. If you have a Apple Watch or a fitness tracker or you run or walk regularly, by the end of this video, you will be able to understand what your Vivo to Max means and why it predicts your, your long-term health and what we will do in the subsequent episodes to start improving it. Vanakam Namaste, I am Dr. Naveen Tiagu, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine enthusiast. In this video, we go to Max 1.0, the foundational episode, the only evidence-based content I have collected from some of the very good journals like JAMA and large meta-analysis and even technical paper behind the Apple Watch cardio fitness features. I'll put the links in the description for those who want to dig deeper into this. In later part of the series, I'm planning to uh, put in training plans, the difference between the interval or the zone 2 training, the device comparisons and so on. So a quick disclaimer, this video is only for educational purpose and not personal medical advice. Please discuss your own risk factors and exercise plan with your doctor. So what is Vivo to Max? Imagine, I'll take you, I'll brief you uh, as a story. So imagine your body as a city and your lungs are the oxygen import office. The heart and the blood vessels are the highway systems. The muscles are the factories where the oxygen is used to generate or produce energy. So now imagine asking a simple question. If I push this city to its limit, how much oxygen can it import, transport and use in one minute? So the answer to that question is Vivo to Max. In scientific terms, Vivo to Max is the maximum volume of oxygen your body can use per minute during intense exercise that is normalized to your body weight and it is usually written as milliliter per kilogram per minute. So if your Vivo to Max is 40 ml per kilogram per minute, it means that at your best effort, every kilogram of your body can use 40 milliliters of oxygen every minute. So Vivo to Max is considered a very good measure of cardiorespiratory fitness because it captures how well your lungs, heart, blood vessels, muscles are working together and not just one organ it estimates in isolation. So you can think of Vivo to Max as the engine capacity of your body. A higher Vivo to Max means a bigger, more efficient engine for your life. So how is Vivo to Max actually measured? So the gold standard test is CPET, that is called cardiopulmonary exercise testing, where you walk, run or run in a treadmill or cycle in a, on a bike with increasing difficulty while wearing a tight mask. The mask will measure the how much of oxygen you inhale and how much of carbon dioxide you exhale. So at some point, even if the treadmill keeps speeding up, the amount of oxygen your body can use stops in increasing. So this plateau is taken as a Vivo to max. So this test is extremely useful in cardiology and sports medicine and it helps decide how, how fit the heart truly is or in, in uh, surgical patients who is safe for major surgeries and who may need cardiac rehab or how severe certain heart or lung conditions are. CPT is expensive and not available everywhere. So in real life, what we do is in the wearables, what is being done is the VO2 max is often estimated from the submaximal tests, like how fast your heart beats at certain walking speed rather than pushing you to the absolute 
absolute maximum. So that's where your wearables come in. The Apple technical paper explains how Apple Watch uses your heart rate plus GPS plus motion sensors during outdoor walks or runs to estimate the VO2 max in the range of roughly between 14 to 16 ml per kilogram per minute. When they tested it against formal exercise tests in more than 700 people, the average error was less than 1 mit, that is equal to about 3.5 ml per kilogram per minute and the reliability over time was high with intraclass correlation coefficient of over 0.85. So is a watch perfect? Uh, probably no. Like if you enter your age, uh, enter your uh, wrong age, weigh, wrong weight uh, in the health app, then things might go wrong. The calculations might go wrong and or walking with a heavy weight or stroller like certain heart arrhythmic conditions or using pacemaker assisted devices or even uh, skeletal or neuromuscular disorders like multiple sclerosis or cerebral palsy where uh, the gait is the gait pattern is changed or inefficient but for many healthy people it is good enough to track trends over months and years so think of lab vivo 2 max as a gold standard and your wearables as a reasonably good mirror to watch your progress so why vivo 2 max is more more important than most people realize so now we bring the big studies little simplified the vivo 2 max and the risk of death just think about this question if we know someone's fitness their vivo 2 max how well can we predict their risk of heart disease and early death the answer is very well you can predict. A major meta-analysis in JAMA looked at how each one met increase in fitness, that is 3.5 ml per kilogram per minute, changed the risk. They found that every one met higher fitness level was associated with about 13% lower risk of all-cause mortality, all-cause death, and about 15% lower risk of coronary heart disease or cardiovascular disease mortality. That's huge and it means and moving from very unfit to just moderately fit can cut a big chunk of your risk. So another study over 500 men of 11 years found that every 1 ml per kilogram per minute increase in VO2 max not met ml per kilogram per minute was linked to about 9% reduction in the risk of death. So if someone improves the VO2 max by say 5 ml per kilogram per minute over time that could translate to 40 to 45 percent lower mortality risk in that data set the next study is a very interesting study for for me especially and that's from the cleveland clinic uh, treadmill study it's it's published in uh, jama network uh, open and they looked at 1 lakh 22 thousand adults who did a treadmill exercise test and followed them for a median of 8.4 years they divided the people into five categories based on the fitness level, like low, below average, above average, high and elite groups. And people in the lowest fitness group had five times higher risk of death compared to the elite groups. Even being just below average carried significantly higher risk compared to the above average group. And importantly, they didn't see any upper limit. The more fit you are, lower your risk, no evidence of harmful two fit zone in terms of mortality. The author points out something provocative. The increased risk from being very unfit was similar to or greater than the risk from smoking, diabetes or having coronary artery diseases. That's why the American Heart Association in 2016 called for respiratory fitness to be treated as a vital sign in clinical practice. So when you watch or your lab report shows we were to max that number is not just about running faster it's a powerful predictor of how long and how well you live so so what is good we were to max for normal life now please don't compare yourself to uh, elite or uh, olympic athletes for daily life the question is different you should be rephrasing the question a little better like what we were to max do i need to live independently to climb stairs, to go for shopping, groceries, and take care of myself in old age. Apple Watch article, 
they use data from a large fitness uh, registry to set thresholds for people above 60 years they mentioned the vo2 max values around 18 ml per kilogram per minute for men and 15 ml per kilogram per minute for women as a rough cutoff below which independent living becomes difficult so it's a functional independence threshold these are not magic numbers but they give us a ballpark so be below these levels the very basic activities like walking 400 500 meters or climbing a flight of stairs or carrying shopping can feel like a real workout so vivo to max is just not a sport metric it is directly connected to whether you can live independently and with dignity especially after 60 or 70 if you ask me a question vivo to max whether it is genetically determined or how much can you change the honest answer is both because the studies suggest that genetics explain roughly 50 to 70 percent of the difference in vivo to max between people at baseline and about 20 to 60 percent of how much vivo to max improve with training so yes some people are naturally gifted but that still leaves a big chunk where you can really influence the same apple watch paper summarizes several training studies and notes that hit training high intensity interval training programs run for 6 to 12 weeks increases the vivo to max by about 5 to 10 percent so that might be difference between low versus average category for your age the mortality studies estimate to a meaningful risk reduction the scary part of vivo to max can drop very quickly if if you stop stop moving some studies report clinical declines of 27 percent in just two to three weeks of completing complete inactivity so your engine is trainable but also detrainable remember your genes load the guns but your daily habits pull the trigger in, in both directions how should a common person use this information doctor if you ask me you are still uh, in part one so keep it the basic uh, this video you understand the foundations of vo2 max so i have i will split it into steps the step one is know your number roughly if you have a watch if you have a fitness tracker watch that reports vo2 max or cardio fitness make sure you enter your age sex weight and medications especially bitter bitter blockers or calcium channel blockers enter that correctly in the health app and try to log regular outdoor walks or runs for at least 10 to 20 minutes that improves the quality of the estimate remember it's an estimate but good enough so to see the trends step two don't get obsessed with one single reading because of day-to-day -day variability individual estimates can bounce around so what matters is the trend over months and not whether today it's 33 or 35 step 3 use vivo to max as one health dial among many use it alongside your blood pressure your blood sugars lipids weight and waistline in Kodama meta-analysis showed that one met higher level of MAC, that is maximal aerobic capacity, is comparable to 7 cm decrement in your waistline, 5 mm of mercury decrement in systolic blood pressure, 1 millimoles per liter in triglycerides in men, and 1 millimoles per liter in fasting blood sugar, and 0.2 millimoles per liter increment in hdl which is a good cholesterol so if your viewer to max is low for your age that's a strong signal to take cardiorespiratory fitness seriously step four talk to your doctor before aggressive training if you have just pain breathlessness out of proportion to effort dizziness or known heart or lung disease please do not start intense intervals just because you want a higher vivo to max check with your doctor let's come to greg and his transplanted heart at the marathon finish line his story shows us two things 
Number one, the human body, even a transplanted heart can adapt far more than we think. If we train it carefully. And number two, adaptation is measurable. It shows up as a higher VO2 max. And that number is not just about sports. It is tied to survival and independence. So my invitation to you is simple. So know your VO2 max number. Respect your number. And over time, nudge it in the right direction. Don't rush up. We will walk this path step by step in the coming vivo to max videos if you found this helpful and want the next parts on training or wearables or zone 2 and interval trainings do subscribe like and share this with someone who needs a scientific and non no nonsense uh, explanations of your vivo to max or your vivo to max experience during physical fitness practice we will catch up in the subsequent videos goodbye